Welcome to another episode of The Inquisitive Analyst. I'm your host, Marcus Udekang. It's the show we all know that talks about business analysis and project management issues and the challenges and triumphs within those fields. It's inspiring, informative, and very much inquisitive. My guest today is a Salesforce administrator and information specialist. He's worked with nonprofit organizations, has a background in information technology, event management, and media relations. He's also an extensive, he also has extensive experience in, believe it or not, music performance. So please help me welcome to today's show, joining us all the way from Ottawa, Canada, Sandy Hunter. Welcome, Sandy. Well, Marcus, thank you so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here today. Well, you're very welcome. I'm glad to have you on the show. And uh, I, I know that you have some extensive experience in Salesforce, obviously, like I mentioned. So maybe mm. we, can, we can start off by asking how and why did you get into using Salesforce? You know what? It was a complete accident. I didn't even mean to do this. It just happened to me. Um, yeah, my background before Salesforce was in was in music performance, as you were mentioning. Uh, my wife and I had been uh, touring together and producing music for over a decade and putting out albums and uh, teaching. And at a certain point, we we decided that we wanted to start thinking about having children and and perhaps purchasing a home. So we tried to find some some new careers that would help support that that effort. And the first place that, that I found that was the right fit was the Ottawa International Chamber Music Festival. This is a mouthful. So I just typically say Chamber Fest for short. They were on the lookout for a box office manager and I fit the bill. Uh, so I came in, I came in to that organization knowing lots about music, but not very much about running a box office necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, when I came in, they were looking to get a new customer relation management tool, a new Ooh. CRM tool to help support their ticket sales. Okay. So I was in on the very ground floor of them uh, taking on Salesforce. And that was my introduction into it. And it's not an uncommon story to have accidentally, accidental admins, as they call mm. it in the Salesforce world. That's mm. how I came into it. Well, there was a famous movie called The Accidental Tourist. And I think there should be a part two of that called The Accidental Salesforce Admin. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, maybe you can give us an idea of what you do with Salesforce at your current employer, which is the Mental Health Commission of Canada. Right. Yeah, the Mental Health Commission of Canada, if it was to, to paint it uh, in some very broad strokes, and this is my, my take on what the commission does. I, I think of it in two separate areas, let's say. One would be programs, uh, uh, priorities and programs, where they're taking uh, a different subject and amassing all sorts of different information on it, expert advice, creating policy and, and sharing that with the general public and or with you know federal, provincial, mm. municipal uh, decision makers. So they cover a broad range, everything from um, suicide prevention or substance use or access to quality mental health. Um, there's, there's just so many different initiatives that that side is taking on and developing. Mm. Nice. Then on the other side, again, this is my interpretation of it. Um, there is mental health training. So a lot like you'd have physical health training, like uh, St. John's Ambulance, let's say, mm -hmm. or if you have a broken arm, you learn how to fix that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a similar concept where, you, where individuals go through courses to learn about mental health uh, and, and how to help address it. And again, it is so widely varied. There's so many different areas that, uh, that we, we will specify on. Mm -hmm. It might just be uh, mental health training for an individual. Or perhaps if you're in an employee role or in a manager role or working in sports or a uh, first responder, there's, again, there's quite a bit. So there's one side that's acting as like, a, a, I like to think of it as a think tank, uh, putting mm -hmm. together the best and the new policies. And there's another side that's delivering courses or helping facilitate to deliver courses. Mm -hmm. okay. So what do I do? Um, in broad strokes, I run their Salesforce database and any other platform that integrates with it. That's, that's my ballywick, so to speak. So with the programs and priorities, I'm spending a lot of time dissecting the contacts and the accounts and, and the, the people that we have in the database um, so that we can disseminate all of this information to the appropriate audience. And then on the mental health training side, um, I, I've come into this situation. They have built out a fantastic system for monitoring courses, uh, the trainers, the participants, 
And most recently, one of our bigger projects was digitizing the certification process. Mm -hmm. so what, do, what do I mean by that? Previous to that, if you were a, a participant in one of the mental health training programs, we would produce a, a physical certificate and mail it to you. And uh, we've just recently gone through this entire process to digitize it. So it makes the whole thing much, much faster. And we use Salesforce to support that whole platform. So broad strokes, but that's what nice. we do. Nice. Now, I'm, I'm just curious, uh, as you were talking, I realized the Mental Health Commission of Canada, is it related anyhow to CAMH, which is the Mental Health Institute in Toronto, just out of curiosity? Um, I don't think it is. I don't want to speak out of turn because there are people who, are, who <laughs> it's it's similar in nature, put it that okay. way. We're, okay. There's All about right. six organizations such as ours, CAMH is one of them, within oh, Canada okay. All right. that, uh, that focuses on, on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah I was curious. I, I lived in Toronto for many years and I used to bypass Cam H. And I remember when it got renovated, the whole building, the whole structure got, and it just went from looking at something like 100 years old to something virtually <laughs> mo modern. So who knows? Maybe they had a Salesforce had been there too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do it all. Yeah, we can do it all. Yeah. Um, now, Oxfam, another company you worked for, uh, mm. just curious at Oxfam, what type of third-party applications did you use with Salesforce and what, what type of value did, did that add to your, to your work? That's a great question. Uh, when I came on to work with Oxfam Canada and I took a look at their Salesforce instance, I recognized that it had been around for approximately nine or 10 years at that point. Mm. And the way that the instance was designed, it made a lot of, it was a custom bill that they were, that they had been managing this whole time. Uh, and that made sense for them when they first started out nine or 10 years ago. And mm. It did exactly what they needed. Um, but in that time, Oxfam Canada had grown in scope and, and, and influence and, and what have you. Uh, also, over the nine or 10 years, Salesforce, Salesforce.org team, they also grew quite a bit and had developed this product. Uh, it's currently uh, it's the nonprofit cloud, mm. uh, if you were to take a look at it today. Um, and I recognized that Oxfam Canada was working with something very customized, very much in a silo, and Salesforce had something over here mm -hmm. that was doing the same concept, but had this entire community around it. Okay. Like, oh, there's, there's, at the time, I think 35,000 different uh, nonprofit organizations using it. And there was a huge community and this, um, it was like, I wanted to bring Oxfam out of the cold and, and, and into the embrace of, of the Salesforce.org family, so to speak. Um, so I wouldn't call that a third-party application necessarily with, Ox, with, with a nonprofit cloud, um, but it was more bringing, it, it's like an extension of what Salesforce can do natively. They've designed mm -hmm. it to support the charities. So that, that was a, a really big strategic move and a very big Hall to, to switch it over. But um, to support that, there's a change management aspect that's at play here. And I needed a way to try and be able to, to document all of this and to try and understand the impact of what, what these changes would do. Yeah, around that time, I was watching some webinars and there was a Salesforce led one. And I can't even remember the subject matter. Mm -hmm. But they were they were demonstrating this this amazing process with some sort of diagram, and somebody in the audience said, "Hey, that's really cool. What is, what is this? What is this thing that you're using to show us this?" And uh, and the presenter kind of sheepishly said, "Oh no, it's not a it's not a Salesforce product. This is something called Elements.Cloud." Mm -hmm. And so I wrote that down, and and I followed up with Elements.Cloud to learn more about it. And that has been one of the third-party tools that I, that I use a lot, not just at Oxfam, I've carried that forward with me. Um, so I, I would recommend uh, anyone to actually take a look at it. And I, I might not do justice describing it, but there's, there's a few different things you can do. First, you can, you can map out any kind of business process or schema that you want. You know, this connects to this, connects to this, connects to this. And you can basically take those ideas of something you might be building in your mind and, and put it down on paper and share it, right? That in itself is cool, but there's a lot more that it can do. You can also start uh, gathering requirements with it and user stories. So if you're running, let's say, a, a discovery session with a team, this is a great place that you can start charting that down. Mm -hmm. And then you can also do impact analysis with the, with the platform where you're, you're basically integrating your metadata of your Salesforce instance into elements. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can tie these, these three things all together. 
So not only can you map out what you want to do, you can also relate it to the individual user who needs that functionality. And you can compare it and do an impact analysis on the, on the database itself to say, if I made this change, what else is it going to affect? Mm-hmm. So that was, that was a third-party tool that uh, I, use, I use on a daily basis now. But that came in around the time when I was working with Oxfam Canada, especially when we were changing. Like, okay, you used to work with the database like this. Now it's going to look a little bit different. Let's try and try and show you the way. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's so, sound, yeah. It sounds like it's got it's got this overall sort of general big picture perspective in Elements Talk right. Cloud that enables you to perhaps even automate your procedures, but keep track of them as well, and mm-hmm. um, at, at every at every stage, sort of thing which you know you might have not been able to do before without without it yeah. not to the extent like salesforce has since come along and introduced some functionality that's that's close to what elements can do in, in some areas but it's it's nowhere near as in depth um, mm-hmm. so especially if if you're new a new administrator coming into a pre-existing organization you can very right. quickly find out what will happen if you make a change and that's mm-hmm. that's a big value yeah it's huge huge value mm-hmm. Now, maybe you can take us through your experience as a Salesforce admin. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what are some of the skills that you've learned and how have they made you more marketable? As a Salesforce admin in the nonprofit industry or, or just in general? Uh, in general would be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, listening. Uh, I have to listen to the people. Mm-hmm. Sure, I need to be technically minded, but I need to be able to take those uh, those wants and needs of the people that I'm, I'm ultimately helping the staff and, and reflect that in a non-technical way <laughs> and present it to them. Right. So it's, it's really uh, the listening skills that I've gained um, over the last seven or eight years, eight years I've been doing this now is probably the, um, the most useful thing that, uh, that I've been able to develop. Yeah. That's fascinating. Listening is so important. And I, I do a bit of tool smashers and, and you keep on emphasizing if you're going to evaluate someone, you have to listen carefully because it makes you a better speaker. And I think it's the same thing in a business too. If you're going to be able to analyze a software like Salesforce or even use, uh, you have to be able to understand the business models that's used at the company, whether it's profit right. or nonprofit. And you have to be able to listen to those people around you to gather the information so that you can easily input it into elements.cloud or Salesforce. So uh, mm-hmm. li- listening is definitely, I think it's key. Top, top on the on the key skills that one needs definitely in the in the Salesforce world or in the nonprofit world or, or even in the admin world, Salesforce admin world for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, the, and the second is a sense of community. I mean, that keeps coming back. And that's what that's back when I started as the box office manager and I, I was introduced to the Salesforce thing. I didn't really know what it was. It was a piece of technology that I had to try and learn. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was it was without a doubt the community that helped bring me along and and realize that, you know, it's okay to be new at something or yeah. if you don't know it's okay to ask right and yeah. to reach out and what i thought initially was a very small community in the salesforce world turned into a very large community and it didn't grow that way i just started discovering more and more pockets of it and more and more mm-hmm. people that have uh, yeah that have, that have helped and, and i helped them mm-hmm. i think and i know there's so many nonprofit sectors oxfam like uh, is one you work for but i'm thinking unicef i'm thinking united mm-hmm. nations i'm thinking the list, uh, there's also CUSO. CUSO is a Canadian university students organization. I can't remember what it stands for, but they do world, well, they've been around for decades and mm. uh, it, uh, Habitat for Humanity. There's a whole list of these uh, organizations that business analysts or even Salesforce admins, I'm sure could work in. Uh, Absolutely. So there's tons of opportunity out there. Yeah. Lots. Now, now uh, you've experienced, obviously you've been talking about the nonprofit sector. Um, maybe you can tell us about some of the services that Salesforce provides specifically for the nonprofits. Sure, sure. Um, so I started talking about community a moment ago, and, and um, as I mentioned, there's various pockets of communities, and there is a very specific one in Salesforce.org. That's the nonprofit arm of Salesforce, and uh, it's called the Power of Us Hub. Um, so that is a that is a customer community where you're sharing best practices and. They are extremely inclusive. So shout out to Ann Young and Liz Robert, Lizzie Roberts and, and all of those awesome, awesome people that are making that happen. So yeah, I think I think that is one of the big advantages. Mm-hmm. Another one is the nonprofit, uh, it's a nonprofit cloud product that they offer. Mm-hmm. And for most nonprofits, um, it's free. You can get 10 free licenses for it. So you can be using one of the world's best platforms for free for your nonprofit. 
Um, mm. That's a uh, that was that <laughs> that's a big seller, I would yeah, say. Yeah, huge. Yeah, um, and also the fact that they've they've changed. It's not just like your standard Salesforce product, which is supposed to be kind of sales oriented. Really, mm -hmm. um, they've they've changed it over to be just be supporting the work that you would do as a nonprofit, whether it's fundraising mm -hmm. or recurring donations, grant management, right. program management. Yeah, so there there is a lot there that Salesforce has to offer. Oh, and I almost almost all vendors that integrate with Salesforce will offer a very uh, generous nonprofit discount. Oh, so okay. you also get to start using some external or third party applications that, uh, that you wouldn't usually get the opportunity to, to do. Nice. Or now, I, I was going to say too, um, what percent, there's a small percentage that I think Salesforce uh, distributes to nonprofits. I, I don't know if it accounts for 10% of their, their company or 10, there's a certain percentage there and I forgot what it is. I don't know if you remember what it is. I, I, I would hate to misspeak, but just going off the top of my mind, I think it was like 1%. Yeah. Oh, of, okay. Yeah. Maybe it's of, yeah, of probably close 20 to billion. I think it yeah. is what they're worth right now. It's quite small. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, know, it's, it's I, I think it's in context compared to some others that you might be, they, they, um, they advertise their contribution to the nonprofit world. So I expect it's comparatively uh, generous. Yeah. But again, I'm not there. <laughs> I don't yeah. know that off the top of my head. So. Yeah. No, this is kind of irrelevant, but it's nice to know. Um, mm -hmm. Now, adoption. Uh, I'm sure, as an admin, as a Salesforce admin, you probably do some business analysis uh, stuff, and vice versa. Some some uh, Salesforce, uh, some business analysis Salesforce uh, folks also do some admin Salesforce admin stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, really, at the core, how what are some ways that you can drive user adoption in Salesforce? Right. Absolutely. Um, I mean, what's what's the point of having this great, awesome tool if nobody uses it? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, adoption is 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 baked in. There's a, a Salesforce podcaster named uh, Mike Gerholt uh, who has coined this term called Sabwa, and that's referring Salesforce administration by walking around. And so his concept was what he would do in his office was he would get up and he'd get out from his cubicle and he'd go around and he'd see people. Hey, how's your day? Um, how's Salesforce going for you? You know, what's your experience like? And just basically getting out behind from behind the desk and seeing people. And they, they, he changed that a little bit now that there's been a pandemic and he called it SABS, uh, like Salesforce administration by zooming around. That's what he was joking. <laughs> right. But the concept is the same is to yeah. get out and be accessible to the people who are using the product. Let them know that, that you're there and that you, you care about how they're feeling and, and that you're ready to hear their frustrations, but also celebrate their wins at the same time. So they're not always coming to you with, uh, oh, something's broken, something's broken. But you want to be able to go around and say, hey, did you see this cool thing? And make make it make it positive as uh, best you can. I also like to do videos lately. It's been my thing. It's just to, to do like short little videos and embed them within the database so that I can point people towards them for like, hey, it's me, Sandy. And and did you want to know how to do X, Y, and Z? And then I'll give them a brief little you know, five, 10 minute kind of thing. Which is also nice now that we've all been virtual to actually get a little bit of FaceTime instead of just straight up reading a document. Um, and then another, this is more of a selling feature on, on the Salesforce side, I suppose. They've got a, a vast uh, learning management system called Trailhead, where pretty much any product, any, any, any piece of the technology behind Salesforce that you want to learn, you can go and learn for free. You can also take that a step further if you're a Salesforce administrator trying to drive adoption. You can actually bake that into your, your instance so it's not a, a complete separate entity, like go here to learn stuff, but you can bring that knowledge and that, um, that content into your Salesforce instance and you can challenge your staff. So I'll, it's, it's a completely gamified system. Right. And it's designed to be short and fast. And when you when you run through, uh, let's say, a module, you'll get a badge, you'll get some confetti, and then you'll be able to post that on your social media saying, look what I've just figured out how to do. Um, and then you can internalize that. So I was using that as part of the onboarding process for my staff. And in one particular success story, I ended up identifying uh, three super users. I should say we all identified each other because we all enjoyed working uh, in this trailhead so much that we challenged ourselves um, to go in and get up to you know, 100 badges, right, to reach this particularly right. high level. And, and we all attained that. And then um, we kept going with the momentum. And then mm -hmm. we decided that we all wanted to get new certifications in Salesforce. 
Mm-hmm. And I've got to say, these, these people were not Salesforce administrators. They had other jobs in the company, but they, mm-hmm. they enjoyed this so much that we, we took it to that level. And then we started going to conferences together. And anyways, it gets a little bit, uh, the momentum keeps going, put it that yeah. way. Cool. Uh, talking about conferences, I did attend Dreamforce 2013, Dreamforce 2014. And I think that was about it. <laughs> that was enough for me. <laughs> it was like, uh, it was like uh, I think someone described it as Disney, say, I don't know, was it the technology and Disney combined or something like yeah, that. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I've been I've been to two and two or three. Well, now I don't know. I think uh, I think at least two in person, and then there's you know virtual summits that are happening now. Right. I'm looking right. forward to going back. That's for sure. Yeah. No, there are tons of uh, virtual summits, no doubt. Now, mm. may, maybe you can take us through some of the experience working as a Salesforce admin with the Ottawa Chamber Music Society. And I like this combination of music with Salesforce. It blows me away. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah, that, that that's in the early days. So we're, we're going back in time when I was still very, very new. Um, so I don't have the, the breadth of knowledge that I, that I accumulated at this point. But when I came on, it was as a box office manager first. That was, okay. that was the job. Um, and when I was working with, with Salesforce, I was working with an ISV partner. So an ISV partner in the Salesforce world is a company that has said, hey, we've been able to do this really cool thing with Salesforce. We're going to start licensing out this product. Mm-hmm. So in this scenario, it was, a, it was a box office ticketing solution built on top of the Salesforce platform. So we had our 10 free licenses of Salesforce and all the capabilities of Salesforce, but this package on top of it, that's what we were actually paying for. Um, and the patron manager team that was that was in place at the time was absolutely amazing. And they, they end up still being lifelong friends. They're out there. They're at Dreamforces. They're all, they're, they're fantastic people, um, but they really cared. They really cared about whether I was going to succeed or not in this role. And so they showed me their community. I keep mentioning this community thing, but that was my first introduction to their customer like community and, and, the, and the people and started going to conferences with them and then it branched out to other communities as I opened my eyes to more Salesforce stuff. So I, I really did. I really did fall in love with, with uh, not just the music and, and the show business piece of this and seeing some great artists and great concerts, but also running the systems that, that drive it. I remember Stuart Copeland, the drummer from the police was uh, when he, he got to meet me at one of these concerts, like, Oh, you run the database. You really are a musician. I'm like, okay, <laughs> thanks. That's a pretty nice compliment nice. from, from, from someone like him. Anyways, after, uh, after a year or two with the, with the chamber fest, I convinced him to change my title from box office manager slash Salesforce administrator. Cause I felt that better reflected what I was doing. Mm. But uh, yeah, being a, it's it's two very different things. Being the uh, trying to to run a show, but then also have the computer system running running the show at the same time. And so yeah. I'll be off in the green room, like working on my laptop, making sure you know Mr. and Mrs. Whoever is in the right seat. Artists are coming and going, and it's just yeah. it's the hustle and bustle of show business plus yeah. Salesforce. <laughs> Isn't that cool when you get to work with uh, big wigs like the, this fellow from you know Copeland from the Police mm-hmm. or any of these big stars? I, uh, years ago, I worked uh, when I was at McMaster University, I worked the radio show and uh, we had to, uh, well, we didn't have to, but, but one of the things that we did was to work the Junos. The Juno Awards came to Hamilton one year. So, and I happened to work at the Hamilton Convention Center. And guess what? I got to rub shoulders with Shania Twain and all these singers. And, and <laughs> yeah. I just, and looking back, I thought, ah, it's kind of cool. But I mean, it had nothing to do with Salesforce, but yeah, I, 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 I could feel the experience that you had. Oh yeah, too. it's it's this everyone's it's funny because everyone's there has a job to do the artists the uh the ushers the the sound techs and everyone's very serious about it and they all have a level of respect for each other it's not like yeah. when you're when you're putting on a show like that or a festival like that you're not putting you know, they're not one person on a pedestal even though technically one or two people are getting up there into the spotlight everybody's yeah. making this thing happen so yeah anyways no, great experiences good. yeah fantastic and obviously salesforce is part of that too mm-hmm. now now having worked as a salesforce admin I assume mm-hmm. I'm. I'm assuming you've also worked with business analysts, uh, Salesforce business analysts, or just uh, pure business analysts. And and if you've worked with them, what what kind of experiences do you have working on projects with with business analysts? Well, first, all right. Uh, yeah, this is my advice to to any analyst out there: define your requirements. Define mm-hmm. your requirements right out of the gate. 
reiterate your your requirements as you go through the project always come back to them saying is this are we still on point and do whatever you can to avoid scope creep Mm -hmm. try and like that's why i'm saying define this and keep it defined um some of the most successful projects that i've worked on um the discovery consultant that i was with at the time was was constantly going back to this and like okay and if and if our conversation started taking us outside of that scope she was very wise enough to say I'm not sure if that's going to going to be possible under what we've defined. You know, the statement of work has already been out there and an amount has been agreed upon. So really keeping that in mind and having that tax to be able to, to say that, you know, that's, that's, that's a real skill to have to be able to communicate that to your client. Um, on larger scale projects um, where you have many different people involved, I think one of the challenges there, one of the, one of the areas to watch is the transfer of knowledge from the discovery sessions to the implementation stages, right? You can have, I've had, I've had been lucky enough to be in, in the situations where I, I've gone through the entire or almost all of the discovery sessions with the staff and then go through all of the implementation. And I found that sometimes I would find myself as kind of the point person saying, no, 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 no. Like it was a different person running the discovery than implementing. It was myself that had to try and bridge that knowledge when mm-hmm. that that's a tricky thing. And that's for more larger scale, um, larger scale projects. So I'd, I'd keep an eye on that. Okay. And something we mentioned earlier too is active listening is a huge, yeah. huge part of it. Um, for example, if you're in a discovery session and, and you're hearing things being said that, that makes sense in like con- in Salesforce terminology, let's say contacts, accounts, campaigns, mm-hmm. but then they're just dropping in the word tracker, right? Which mm-hmm. might be you know, like, what's a tracker? I've never heard of a tracker before, but to them it's commonplace language. Just having that, like, in, like that, that ear open to say, okay, there's something custom in, in what they're talking about. Let's try and drill into that a little bit more and define it. Which is, uh, I speak from experience on that one. Um, but as if you do end up in a Salesforce administrator position, especially if you're in the nonprofit world, you will be an analyst, and you will be an implementer, and you will be an IT support. You will be. Yeah, you will be everything. So I've I've had that experience of of sitting in very many different roles and uh, enjoyed that. I think I think it's cool because it's just like working with a smaller company. You get to mm-hmm. do a, like a jack of all trades sort of thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. And maybe you're a master at one or two, but you're definitely a jack of all these trades. Uh, once you start to get to those bigger companies, your roles tend to be much more I don't know focused. Defined, I guess yeah, much more yeah. defined. And it's fun. I mean, you go deeper in one area, but you right. don't have that breadth anymore, you know. And uh, I kind of like I kind of like the the doing it everything, but uh, it, it's yeah, it's you can only do that for so long, and then you kind of want to do something different or, or maybe grow in a different way. Sure. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I completely understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's great to have the breadth, but then sometimes you want to be able to just zone in and 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 do one thing like super 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 well, and then be able to zone back out and get that. Big yeah. picture again, yeah. Yeah. So, any any advice or any recommendations for those folks who want to either one get into Salesforce or mm-hmm. even get into the nonprofit sector, do, mm-hmm. uh, working with with uh, Salesforce, for instance? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the ecosphere has changed a lot since I started. I think the uh, the demand for the job market is has grown. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people out there that are looking for Salesforce administrators. And a lot of them want uh, <laughs> Salesforce administrators with experience. And then there's that old question, oh, how do I get experience if I don't get the job mm. first? And, and then um, I'm, I'm still debating about this. This is great. But some people recommend start working with a nonprofit. And I think, yes, that, that is a good idea because nonprofits do need all the help they can get. They're, they're trying to make every, every dollar do its utmost. So if you're willing to go in and do some pro bono work with a, with a nonprofit environment, that will help them out. But you need to be very responsible about what you're doing mm-hmm. and be, um, be honest about your motives, right? Like if you're there because you really believe in whatever the cause is, that's one thing. But if you're just there to build up your skill set and then move on, that's another thing. So, so be responsible if you're going to take that approach. Um, for example, don't build anything that is too complicated or something that you can't walk away from and it will still run or be able to be maintained. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something that's, I would say to be careful for. Um, 
if you are working in the nonprofit community, it's a, it's a great place. It's great people. The other people that you work with in your organization probably won't have anything to do with, or very little to do with Salesforce because they're already doing five or six other jobs at the same time. So there'll be a lot of onus on you to make it do what it's supposed to do, which can be, as we were discussing, thrilling. <laughs> um, and, and reach out. I mean, especially if you're in the nonprofit Salesforce world, go to the Power of Us Hub. Come find me on the Power of Us Hub. Uh, there's there's a lot of us out there, and we're all there to help each other out. Um, yeah, and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's my best key. advice. That's the key. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah, there are there are challenges with any job, and, and, and nonprofits are no exception, obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, it it comes down to just like any job. What are you looking for? I mean, what's what's it what's in it for you, and what's in it for the company that you're working for, right? right. And if both parties can uh, kind of get this mutual benefit, then that's even better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool, fantastic. How can anyone in the audience get in touch with you if they want to, Sandy? You know, probably the most direct way is through LinkedIn. I, I do spend uh, time just hanging out on LinkedIn and chatting with people. Uh, so you can just Sandy Hunter, Mental Health Commission of Canada. I am I'm out there. Um, alternatively, alternatively, if you are in the Salesforce community, you can find me on the Power of Us Hub or on the Trailblazer Success Community. I'm there as well. Um, but uh, for the general public, LinkedIn is where I'm at. All right, fantastic. Well, thanks, Sandy, for coming on the show. It's been absolutely a pleasure. A lot of information to take. And I, I know we've just covered the surface of, of stuff. If people want to go deeper into it, they can definitely give you a contact. Thank you. Oh. Marcus, thank you so much for having me. I was uh, very, very glad to hear from you. And I, I love what you're doing. Keep, keep doing it. All right. Thanks very much, Sandy. Well, have yourself a wonderful day in Ottawa. I will. You too, Marcus. Thanks. All right. You're welcome. Bye. And now a word from our sponsors. The Lewis Institute provides an enterprise project management program that does more than just train PMs. It helps support them from the CEO level on down. These courses help certify project leaders and prepare them to pass the PMP exam. The Business Agility Institute provides Emergence, the Journal of Business Agility. This quarterly publication brings you inspiring stories from the most innovative companies. Use the promo code ANALYST to get a 10% discount on your annual subscription.